On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Today on Nightwise.com, we're going to show you how to download torrents. On the edge of real and cyberspace, there is one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to Nightwise.com, the one and only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. Whether you're a Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, or Sun Solaris user, we have the tips and tricks you need to tune tech into your way of life instead of the other way around. My name's Nightwise, and I'll be your host on this episode of KW, let's see, 707, where we are going to show you how to use the Pirate Bay browser and download torrents from anywhere. Hey guys and girls, we've got great content for you this week. We have wise guy Daniel coming to talk to us about using the Pirate Bay browser to use the Tor network to make sure that you surf anonymously. A little bit later on, I'm going to show you how to install a web-based torrent client and download your torrents from anywhere using even your phone. Hello, Dan Messer, the Cyberpunk Librarian here for Nightwise.com, the only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. And today, we're going to have a look at the Pirate Browser. Now, the Pirate Browser is, at its heart, a distribution of Firefox Portable. So you're getting a portable web browser, but you're getting a few extra features on top of that. Beyond Firefox, it also uses the Tor network. Now, while the Tor network is usually used for anonymizing your identity online, the Firefox portable version that comes with the Pirate Browser actually takes it in a different direction where it won't anonymize your identity so much as it will help you circumvent censorship. And this is actually what lies at the heart of the philosophy of the Pirate Browser. Censorship circumvision. So if you are living in a country where, for some reason, you cannot get easy access to the Pirate Bay or other sites like that, maybe you can't get access to torrent sites, you have problems accessing news sites from out of the country, the Pirate Browser is probably a decent browser to look at for that. At the very least, you can use it to get around filtering in many places. So let's have a look at the Pirate Browser. Okay. So to begin with, you're going to need to get the Pirate Browser, and that's pretty easy. Just head on over to piratebrowser.com, and you're presented with a lovely website. Scroll down a little bit, you can get some information as to what it's all about. But right here is your pay dirt. You've got a magnet link, a torrent file, or a self-extracting archive, which you can download directly. You're only going to be getting a self-extracting archive anyway, so I'm just going to download that to begin with. And we're going to save that. And once it's downloaded, we'll get started. Okay, so once you've downloaded the Pirate Browser, you'll get a file like this. Currently, it's piratebrowser underscore 0.6 beta.exe. It's just a self-extracting archive done through 7-zip. Double-click that, and you might get a warning in Windows. Are you sure you want to run the software? Yes, we are. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now, the Pirate Browser is absolutely portable. So you can put it on a USB stick, an external hard drive, wherever you like it to be. And it's separate from any current installation of Firefox you may already have. So for now, just for speed, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my main drive in a directory called Pirate Browser. Hit Extract, and it'll run through its extraction process. Now this will take a few seconds depending on if you're installing it locally or onto an external drive. But it is helpful with the remaining time here to tell you exactly how much time you have left, and the last part of it goes pretty quickly. Once it's done, you're done, and you can get started. Okay, so here we are on the uh, C drive, my main drive, under Pirate Browser, and here's Pirate Browser 0.6 Beta. If you open that up, 
you have a helpful file here called startpiratebrowser.exe. That is actually all you really need to do to get started. We'll double click that and you'll get this Vidalia control panel. Now Vidalia is there to help you connect to and manage your connection with the Tor network. So you'll see it run through the status here as it's loading network status, authority certificates, making a secure connection to get you on the Tor network. This doesn't take long, but it can take a little longer the first time you do it than subsequent times. So, you know, have a little patience. So once the pirate browser launches, and it launches automatically upon a successful connection to the Tor network, you're presented with something that's a little different than your average vanilla installation of Firefox. In this case, you get the Pirate Bay as your home page. That makes a lot of sense, since the pirate browser is brought to you by the Pirate Bay. You'll also notice there are a few bookmarks up here all set up for you. These are different torrent sites that you can view at your leisure and check out, see what they have to offer. A couple of the sites have a backup option, and these are for when you cannot access them normally. You'll notice the URLs have very strange setups, and that's because these are onion links. In case you don't know, Tor is short for the Onion Router, which is why you'll keep seeing references to onions in Tor software, like the Vidalia Tor client. These links will work just fine as long as you're connected to the Tor network. But you'll notice it comes up a little bit slower than what you're used to. Because the Tor network works by bouncing your connection from country to country, place to place, you sacrifice speed in order to circumvent censorship and to anonymize your presence online. So things will be slower, but things will work fairly well. You can go to any website that you want, but you'll notice it just takes a little longer to come up because of this bouncing connection. See, things come up, they're just a little slower. Another setup that's available by default in the pirate browser comes in the form of an add-on. You get Foxy Proxy Standard as part of the package. Now, Foxy Proxy is there for you to set up your own proxy servers, or at least to route your connection through those proxy servers. So, if you've set up a proxy server at home, or you're paying for a proxy service, or using a free one, you can put that information in here and have Foxy Proxy route your traffic through that as well. It's already set up to use the the uh, the Tor network, so it's ready to go right out of the box. If you don't use a proxy server, it's okay. It's already using Tor for you. Another thing you should be aware of comes in the form of options. If we go to Tools and Options and check out the Privacy tab, you'll notice that tracking is automatically turned off. Do not tell sites anything about my tracking preferences. And there's also some custom settings for history where it will accept cookies from sites, which means you can log into your email and then be able to come back to it later on. However, it will clear the history out when you close the pirate browser out. So when you close out, everything dumps and your data is secure. So that is a quick overview of the pirate browser. Works like normal, but because you're going through different networks and being bounced from country to country, you do sacrifice that speed. So that's a basic introduction to the pirate browser. Now, once again, it's good to keep in mind that your connection is going to be slower because it's going through the Tor network. So you're not going to see the same speed that you normally see going through your normal network connection. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that it is a browser that's designed to circumvent censorship. And while it connects you to torrent sites, it's usually considered bad form to download torrents through the Tor network. The Tor network was set up for exactly this kind of purpose, to circumvent censorship and for people in countries where there may be political oppression and a lack of information and a lack of access. That's why the Tor clients and the Tor network exists. So if you start pulling torrents through a Tor network, you're going to slow things down for everybody. So if you're looking to download torrents, do it on your own connection, maybe look into a VPN. It's just better for everyone that way. And with that, back to you, Nightwise. In order for us to be able to download 
torrent files, uh, we will, of course, need a BitTorrent client. And that's exactly what we're going to install. Now, I've got a standard Ubuntu distribution here. You can just use about any uh, distribution you want. We're going to open up a terminal and install a torrent client called Transmission. I'm going to do that very simply by typing sudo apt get install transmission. Enter your password. There you go. It will get installed pretty fast. There it is. Now, if I go to my uh, dash here, I'll see I've got it right here. So we'll open it up. And transmission is actually a very, very simple program to download torrents clients. Now, uh, we have a little bit of a menu bar here where you can uh, select to open a torrent file that you have actually downloaded. Um, but you can also um, start the download, pause the download and remove the torrent file so you're not seeding it anymore. Now, I'll give you an example. So we're just going to quickly uh, fire up um, our browser here. And we're going to look for a, uh, let's see, Linux Mint torrent. Take us to the Linux Mint uh, download page where we will find a link to the torrent. Uh, let's see here, download links. Uh, where's the torrent? Let's see, let's take a standard 32 cinnamon and here's the torrent so we'll download the torrent file and we're not going to uh, open it up uh, right away with transmission so we're going to do that manually so it's downloaded the file we're going to go back to transmission and open that file so open we're going to go to the downloads and here's our point torrent file so i'm just going to open this up it's going to say what's inside it's a 1.22 gigabyte file and all we need to do is open it up and as you'll see um, it will immediately go start looking for other seeders and peers who are also uh, who have also downloaded that torrent and are still sharing it with the rest of the internet so what we're doing right now is actually downloading a file without um, putting a heavy load on the server from uh, the Linux Mint guys so uh, as you can see the more users that actually appear online and the more sources or seeders or peers actually that have uh, the file as well the faster it goes and this goes at a whopping speed so 6.19 megabits per second uh, or even higher and as you can see I'm also uploading that file at a certain pace now this will actually have that file on my desktop in a matter of minutes but you are also uploading said file to the internet now if I leave this torrent in place after the download you will be sharing out the file with the rest of the internet that might be a good thing that might not be a good thing because you are also when you're sharing out that file burning up bandwidth now in all fairness there is something like internet karma if you are actually receiving a um, seeded BitTorrent file, like for example this ISO, it is polite to seed it out as well. I mean to have it available to all of the other people who are currently downloading uh, all of that file because you know you're you're basically a part of the group, a piece of the puzzle that is not only downloading said file but also serving it up for other people. And you know you have to have a little bit of good karma just look at the speeds that this thing is coming in at uh, so it's pretty amazing now if I were to download this from the server directly as one file it would be a point-to-point -point connection and I would be um, actually um, having to uh, be subject to the maximum load of that server and that server's uh, number of simultaneous connections so for example if that server had five megabits uh, of bandwidth available to it and we would be connected with 500 people that would be five megabits divided by 500 and believe me i would not be getting these kinds of speeds now just to give you a little bit of demonstration the file is now almost completely downloaded let's just get the final parts here there you go and we are now seeding the file to other people there we go 16 14 uh, it's uploading at a leisurely pace it's not really 
hurting my bandwidth, but to all of the other people who are downloading it, I'm contributing to the awesome speed they're getting. Now you can set some properties here. Let me just uh, go to the properties page and you can uh, see different things. This is, these are the properties of, of, of um, the file. You can see the tracker, you can see the files, you can see some options and stuff. So that's pretty cool, but you can also, when uh, you want to give, take a look at the properties for all of the um, BitTorrent files that you have. So I'm gonna remove the torrent here. I'm not gonna remove the file, just the torrent. There you go, remove. And I'll go to the properties for, or to the preferences uh, for transmission where you can actually set a little bit more. Now you can start downloading when added and you can move the torrent file to the trash when you're done. You can also have transmission watch a certain directory where you will actually uh, drop some torrents into. Uh, you can say that you want to stop seeding at a current ratio or if you want to stop seeding if uh, nothing is happening to the file after 30 minutes. So when it comes to downloading, you can say where to download it, how many torrents you want to download at the same time, um, to be sure that you know which download is complete and which isn't, you can have a dot part added to the incomplete file names and you can store them even somewhere else. And you can even call up a script when the download is complete, for example, to send you a tweet or something. Speed is pretty important because this will actually cap some of the speeds that transmission uses. And why would you want to do this? Well, quite frankly, because um, if the torrent is sufficiently popular, uh, it will suck up your bandwidth. Now you can set a maximum cap on the download speed and a maximum cap on the upload speed. And um, you can also say, I want uh, to have such and such speeds during the day and I want such and such speeds during the night. So for example, you can say from nine to five, I want only this, uh, these number of um, these speeds when it goes up and down. And after five o'clock, I just want you to go all out. Now, what I would recommend that you do is that you actually put the night time in here where you basically say, um, during the day when I'm awake, uh, you know, try to keep the traffic down. I want to use my bandwidth, but at night when I'm asleep, you can just go all the way. So that's actually pretty cool. You can even schedule it for weekdays or the weekends. Pretty powerful stuff. So you got the privacy tab here, um, which is not really that important. You can set the port where it listens on. And if you want to forward that port from your router to your machine, and, you know, open it up on your router, forward it to your machine, your torrents will actually go a little bit faster. Uh, you can set limits on peers. You want to download or upload to maximum 60 people or maximum 240 people. Not really very, very important. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, tell your computer it cannot go to sleep when it's downloading torrents and it can show the transmission icon in the notification area up here. And this is when it, it will talk to you when the torrent is added, when it's finished and it makes a little ding. So it's pretty cool. So up until now, it's a very, very simple BitTorrent client. It does what it does and it does it well. But you have to be behind your computer to add torrents, download torrents, monitor torrents, stop torrents. And that's something we don't want. We want to be able to do this from anywhere. And this is where transmission shines because it has a web client. Now we're going to enable said web client and we're going to make sure that we can access our BitTorrent client, which is on our machine and is running from anywhere. The first thing that we want to know is uh, on what port we will be running this little web server. And I'm just going to pick a random port here. Don't, don't pick the default port that uh, transmission offers you because that's a known port. People will try to knock. And then of course, very, very important, use authentication. Uh, because you don't want to open this up to uh, either your local network or uh, the world for people to just, you know, select which downloads you are, which torrents you are gonna download. Now, if you're only using it inter internally on your network from any computer, because what this thing actually enables you to do 
is to download torrents uh, using just your browser. And what you basically do is you find a torrent, you go to the uh, transmission web interface, you give it the torrent and it will download the torrent. So, and you can just do that with your browser. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, what you want to know is when you run it only inside your network and you know, you use your browser on your different systems on your local LAN to just find torrents and add them to your download client, you probably don't need authentication. When you're opening this baby up to the internet, yes, you want to use authentication because otherwise, as I said, anybody can just drop a torrent on your transmission client and set the download to go. Uh, it's a very interesting way of uh, doing things because you might get home and find all kinds of weird surprises put there by strangers, but I don't know if that's something you want to do with your uh with your LAN <laughs> or with your uh, bandwidth and with your internet connection. So we're gonna uh, do some authentication, gonna put a pretty simple password here and I'm going to open this up. So this means when uh, there's 172.001 that only the local machine, the server or the machine that I'm actually using here can use the browser to connect to it. That's quite pointless because we have the client on that machine. So. We're going to open that up. So what we did right now is we have ins we have activated the transmission web interface on port 1999. I've put in a password and uh, a login, and we are going to see how that works. Now you can immediately test whether or not it's working. And it's going to ask for my password, for my login and my password, for example, come on. My mouse is acting up. There you go. And that actually is our web interface. Here I am in my browser, and this is the web interface of transmission. Now we're gonna do what we did before. We're gonna do that again. I'm gonna go back to that page and find that torrent. But instead of downloading it, I'm just gonna right click and say copy link location. Double click and just click on this icon, paste it and choose upload. Now, what is actually happening? Well, transmission is running and is actually going to download that file all over again. So I'm going to close the browser here. There you go. And there you got it. This is my transmission client. It all kind of looks alike. That what that is what makes it so cool. And it is re-downloading that file at an immense speed uh, because it already downloaded it. But just let you see that I can use a browser from any machine to do the same thing. Now, if you've opened up your port to the internet and you can connect to your home network that way, you can do this from your phone. And in order for you to believe me, I'm going to show you how I very easily uh, go about my everyday life when I find a torrent, for example, a new Linux distribution that I want to download and, that I'm, and when I'm on the road, I can just add that torrent to transmission and download it right away. How it is done? Well, I'm going to show you right now. To show you that you can actually use your transmission client on any system, I have uh, my smartphone right here and uh, I've opened up a browser and entered the search term Ubuntu Torrent Download. This will take me to the alternate uh, Ubuntu download page, which will give me links not to the ISO files of the actual distributions, but to the torrent files to download those ISO files via BitTorrent. So what we're going to do here, we're going to select one of these and choose the option copy link address. Now we're going to connect to our little transmission web interface. And the way we're going to do that is enter the IP here. And I've taken the LAN IP of that system. But you can take your public IP and uh, route that through or NAT that through to the machine that you're running transmission on, thus being able to accept and um, use that client, accept connections from the uh, internet and use that client from anywhere. So as you can see, I've also entered the right port number 19999. 
I'm going to go to it and straight away it's going to ask me for my credentials. So I'm going to enter them right here. And my uh, password, which is ridiculously simple. There you go. And I'm going to log in. And there you see it's a very mobile friendly web interface. So all I need to do, sorry for the blurry camera here, is tap that blue icon and then paste the link that we just downloaded. And as you can see, it's a link to an ISO file. So I'm going to tell it to start downloading straight away and upload it to my system. And there you see that it is actually now being uh, downloaded on my uh, transmission system. Now it will take a little while for it to find the right number of peers, but there you go, three of 14. And um, as you can see, the download is already starting. Let me just see here. There you go. At about eight hours remaining, it's not a great speed, but it will pick up in a couple of seconds. Now, when I get home, that will be downloaded. That will be something that will be ready to use and I can just use my phone to quickly find torrent files, uh, paste them into transmission and use them uh, that way from any device. It's really, really convenient. And uh, especially when it comes down to Linux distributions, using uh, BitTorrent is a great way to save bandwidth for those servers who are already under strain and get your ISOs as soon as you want them. All of that using uh, just your phone or you can do it on your tablet or you can do it on your laptop. It doesn't really matter. The web-based interface of transmission is accessible to any device that has a browser, no matter what operating system that you use. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Nightwise.com podcast, learn something from it, and perhaps now you'll be downloading your favorite distributions from your phone to your home computer from just about anywhere. Before we go, I've got a quick personal note that I want to share with you. I'm actually doing a little bit of a secret project where I have bought Niana a gift for Christmas, a special gift just for her. And I wanted it to be a little special because I wanted it to be something to say thank you for the support she gives to me and to Nightwise.com. You might not know this, but Niana does a lot behind the screen. She supports me, she has the patience for me to put this, uh, all of this together. She is a very active contributor when it comes to being very skeptical about what we produce and uh, making sure that we have the highest quality standards. And she's also a real trooper. Just uh, to give you guys an example, the facts, coverage, Yana wasn't feeling too well that day, she had uh, back pain, but still she slugged down for five hours. She uh, walked with us on the show floor, taking pictures, giving us directions, being an awesome producer. So I wanted to uh, find a way to say thank you to Niana for the great support that she gives us. So I got her a gift, but you can help me. The only thing that we want to do this year is do something special for Niana. And the way that I'm going to do that is as follows. I'll get her the gift, that won't be a problem, but I just want it to be from the entire community. So you can help. All you need to do is take a selfie of yourself with a card that says something like Merry Christmas Niana or whatever, as long as it has the name Niana, and send it to us at feedback at nightwise.com before the 23rd of December please, otherwise, you know, Christmas is gone. Uh, I'm gonna print out all those selfies and make a big um, chain out of them. So she gets the present, not only from me, but also from the entire nightwise.com community. And we would make her Christmas really special. So you can help us, take a selfie, uh, email it to us, feedback at nightwise.com. That's all you have to do. Well, that's all we have time for today. See you next week on the audio side of the nightwise.com podcast where we are going to talk about how to install your Android phone or tablet with all the apps you really need. Until then, www.nightwise.com is the place where you want to go to. Make sure you subscribe and get all the nightwise.com episodes delivered to your podcast catcher automatically. Until then, let technology work for you, not the other way around. See ya.